convert your photos to a 3D scene in Photoshop. You might expect this to be a very advanced tutorial. That super pro skills are required to achieve this effect. If you genuinely think that, you are mistaken. This is a very simple and straightforward method that anyone can replicate by simply following this tutorial. You can follow along by downloading the image I'm using in this tutorial. Almost all of the links are in the video description. So, without further ado, let's get started. Can anyone guess what my least favorite Photoshop function is? It's making selections those with a busy background and messy hairstyles, in particular. Unfortunately, that is the first step in this tutorial. Make a selection of your subject. You can use quick selection, the subject button, or whatever method suits you best. However, take your time and make a perfect selection. Perfect selections always gives best output and the most visually appealing results. I'm speeding up things here to save time and, more importantly, to reduce file size. My hard drive was nearly full and I didn't want to strain it. I hope you can relate to my problem too. Once you've made your selection, copy it into a layer by pressing Ctrl or Command plus J. Name the layer subject. Then, while holding down Alt Option, click on layer thumb to load the selection. Unlock the background layer and change name to background. Make sure the selection was still active, then expand the selection by 50 pixels. These values are all dependent on the size of your image. However, keep in mind that expand value should cover the entire subject without interfering with the actual selection. Fill the selection now with content aware, with color adaptation, 100% opacity and normal mode. Deselect the selection and convert the both layers to smart objects. Otherwise, the 3D moving scene effect will not work with normal layers unless you convert it to a smart object. Now, group the layer and rename it 3D Parallax Effect. Always be organized, especially in Photoshop, to avoid issues. We must now create a video timeline. We can do this by selecting the timeline option from the window menu. Set the document timeline settings of the timeline as well as the work area and of the timeline. In this case, I'm only keeping it for 3 seconds. As you are all aware, video rendering takes time and I do not want to wait that long. Now, select the subject layer. Keep play hit at first frame. Clicking on this stopwatch activates the transform track. Then move play hit to last frame. Open the free transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command plus T, scale the subject layer from the bottom right corner. Once you're satisfied with your position, hit the tick button which adds keyframe at the end of the timeline. Same as the previous step, this time select the background layer. Key play hit at first frame. Clicking on this stopwatch activates the transform track. Then move play hit to last frame. Open the free transform tool scale the subject layer from the center. Once you're satisfied with your position, hit the tick button which adds keyframe at the end of the timeline. Let's take a look at what you've done by pressing the play button. Because it was rendered in the background, the first preview always lags. It seems very good to me. You can change the speed or slowness by simply moving the keyframe in the transform track. You can also add additional overlays, such as sun rays and dust particles. Place above the subject using the screen blending mode, then, just like before, add transform keyframes to the timeline. Finally, Render the video with the desired quality and size. To save the video, press the render button. That concludes this tutorial. I hope you got something out of this video. To help support this channel, please join YouTube memberships or become a Patreon. 
by becoming a supporter, you can get access to all tutorial files and can download them instantly. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and give this video a like, share and comment. See you in the next video. Stay tuned. Peace.